everybody! Jason here from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, streaming on Treaty 7 land. Home of the Blackfoot Confederacy, the Sutina Nation, and the Stony Nakoda Nation, along with the Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3. Welcome back to Raid the Arcade, New Game Plus. This is a stream for Extra Life, the 24-hour gaming marathon that's part of the Children's Miracle Network. Do you want to play games in the old kids? Go to www.extra-life.org. There you can sign up for free and start collecting pledges from your friends, family, and co-workers. They all go towards your local children's hospital, and then you get to play games for 24 hours. Game day this year is November 2nd, but fundraising goes all year round. Extra Life started over 15 years ago and has since raised over $130 million for children's hospitals across Canada and the U.S., and over $11 million was raised in 2023 alone, all raised by gamers just like you. I'm playing games to help raise money and awareness for the Alberta Children's Hospital here in Calgary that helps over 100,000 sick and injured children each year. I've been part of X Life for 12 years now, and it's a great way to have a lot of fun by doing a lot of good. And you can donate in the links below or on my pinned posts on Twitter, Facebook, and Mastodon. In 2023, over $183,000 was raised via Alberta Children's Hospital through Extra Life. It was all done by gamers across Alberta and all over the world. You can also join in the fun and help out because kids can't wait. And now by giving back, you can game on. If you are one of the first 1,000 x Life Platinum participants to raise $2,000 US in 2024, you want to lock your very own custom x Life controller for the console of your choice, courtesy of our friends over at Controller Chaos. These controllers will go fast, so get your fundraising going now. So if you'd like to learn more about x Life, or if you'd like to sign up yourself, go to www.extra-life.org. Okay, it's Monday night, uh, 10 o'clock, time to party. Well, thanks uh, Well, thanks for, for tuning in for tonight's uh, stream. Uh, yeah, I was off uh, the last, I was off on Friday night. Uh, it's because, well, I had a ticket to see a special uh, screening of the original Terminator movie from 1984 and a full 4K restoration. So, yeah, Arnold was back. But, yeah, here I am, I'm back here tonight, and tonight I'm going to be continuing my playthrough of Final Fantasy 16. So let's just dive right back on in. Okay, it's so yeah, it's actually been a minute so, since I resumed my Final Fantasy 16 playthrough. Uh, I'm telling you, if I stream more often or if I stream longer, I would have probably would have finished the game and its DLC a long time ago. But yeah, you know, really have no idea where, where I am or what's going on right now. Oh, but right now it's saying, let's see, let's just uh, let's just check out the active time lore here. Anything that I might need to know? Yeah, I don't think I need to know anything about. Don't think I need to know anything here in the Act of Time lore system. I know that when I was last playing uh, FF16, I was trying to concentrate on on getting rid of the rather clearing up uh, the the hunting log. But but let's just see what's uh, let's just see what's new around here. Covered in nicks and lumps, the lot of them. It's a wonder they can still walk. Yeah, but let's see what else is new, and let's see what some of my other fellow freedom fighters have to say. Clive. Allow me to educate you. Here you are. Okay, so this is the situation. The Battle of the Naldia Nero. The Enterprise sights the Enherjar in the Nadia Nero. Naldi and Arrow, and while the force battle ensues between their crews, Joshua keeping King Barnabas occupied, while Clive cuts his way for the Royal Knights, manning the Black Galleon. Okay. So, Clive rescued Jill from the Ein Hagar's brig, only to encounter King Barnabas once again on the floor of the Nadia Nero. Once again, Clive is best forced to retreat to the Shadow Coast, where he and Jill await the Enterprise's rescue. So, yeah, it looks like that's... Uh, so, yeah, it looks like uh, that's... That's what's going on right here. So, let's see. Oh yeah, there's uh, details in there about our mithril-powered ship. Yeah, yeah, we only briefly got, got got to see the Shadow Coast, but we're having to go back. Very good. Okay. Okay, so let's see then. Let's see what new stuff is around here. How are you doing? Show me the alignment reports, try? please. Okay, let's see. Is there a new one here? We can... Oh, looks like there's a. Uh, looks like there's actually quite quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of side quests uh, to take care of here. Okay, under new management. Let's see what this one is. Oh, okay. Guess I'm on my way right now then. Okay, 
I don't think there's any more side quests here in this immediate area, so let's just go go talk here to Underdo Management and let's see what's let's see what's happening around here. There were ghosts at the gates, not days ago. Let's eavesdrop on the locals. Those things I said before about not being able to fight. You didn't mean them. I know. That's not the man you are. The man I love. Okay. Okay, let's see what's happening around here. and I may soon be without a home. What's happened? The High Cardinal has descended from his lofty throne and taken up residence here in Northreach. The High Cardinal? Leader of the Council of Elders, second only to his radiance at the head of the Imperial government. Not that any of those things still exist. Now he goes by his noble title, the Duke of Oriflam. And what does he want with Northreach? He wants to transform it into a military stronghold. A foundation upon which to build a new Sambrek. He's already secured the support of the various army remnants. With promises that they shall be afforded the respect they deserve in his empire. One built on the confiscated property of the people. He would rob the populace to pay for it. Believe me. I have used every means of persuasion to discourage him from this folly. But for whatever reason, he will not listen to me. What does Captain Philippe make of this? When the town was under attack, it was him the soldiers rallied around. Couldn't he use that influence again? How? By speaking out against one of the most powerful men in Sambrec. A man whose stated aim is to revive the Empire Philippe's comrades swore to serve, and to improve the soldier's lot within it. The captain can offer them a regular supply of gruel, and an occasional trip to the Vale to help them forget the terrors they face each day. The Duke offers them a vision of strength and safety. No. Any attempt to incite mutiny would cost Philippe the support of his men. If it did not cost him his life. But given the mood around town, mutiny may yet be unavoidable. The people have little appetite for further deprivation. Least of all when it serves only to elevate others. Who could blame them? Clive, <laughs> would you appeal to the Duke on my behalf for your services to Northreach? You have the respect of the soldiers, and they will take you to his eminence if you ask them. And unlike Philippe, no bonds of loyalty prevent you from speaking your mind to the man. Well, will you try? You could hardly fare any worse than I did. Sure, I'll see what I can do. I'll see what I can do. Thank you, Clive. Tell me then, where will I find this Duke of Oriflam? In the garrison? Overseeing the troops, yes. All right. Wish me luck. The fact that the soldiers trust you may well carry some weight with the Duke. He needs their support, after all. I only hope that you can make him see sense before he tears the town apart. Okay, so let's go talk to... <clears throat> let's speak with the Duke of Oriflam in the garrison. I may have met this Duke before, at the Remembrance Ceremony. Let's hope I didn't make a strong impression. It's heartening to see that the Guard have rediscovered their purpose. I just hope they don't do anything stupid, 
We've lost enough people to those things. Halt. Oh, sorry about that. You're the dame's man, aren't you? You got some business with the captain? No, actually. With the Duke. I was hoping I might be able to speak with him. We're under orders not to let any civilians pass. But you should be all right. His eminence has heard all about you and your heroics. Wait here. I'll go and ask. So, you are the sellsword who lent his aid to the garrison. The Empire owes you a debt, and I shall see it repaid. But tell me, is it wealth that you seek, or favor? Neither, Your Eminence. I thought only to inquire about your plan to turn Northreach into a stronghold. Ah, I see. You are worried the expanded garrison will render your services redundant. Yet you needn't be. A proud fighting man like yourself shall always have a place here. Pride of place, in fact. For too long has the contribution of the noble soldier been under-reckoned. But no more. For it is they who shall see the Holy Empire rebuilt, beginning right here in Northreach. Why here, Your Eminence? The town has been fortunate enough to escape largely unscathed from the recent troubles. Her defenses are sound, and her garrison well prepared. Which is more than can be said for Oriflam or Twinside. The Empire wants for a capital, and I believe Northreach to be the perfect place. With Cairn Norvant as her citadel. Once we have seen to the refortification of both the town and the castle, we need only build a wall around both to create a city that would be the envy of the twins. Plans are already underway for the construction. Soon enough, these thralls shall learn that they are no match for the might of Sandbreck. I fear you underestimate how dangerous these creatures are, Your Eminence. Should they return in force, you will need all the people of Northreach to come together in defense of the town. Something they may be loath to do if they've been deprived of their worldly goods. The people will do as their leaders command. If Sandbreck is to be rebuilt, she will require a functioning government. One whose authority is beyond question. That is why this levy is necessary. So that any man who wishes to join the army might do so and be fed, outfitted, and paid as befits a defender of the Empire. And yet there are those who persist in peddling the treasonous lie that I seek to steal from the people and drive them from their homes. I suspect they're afraid of losing what little they have left. Precisely. The common folk have little and less, and you mean to deprive them of even that. You would sow the seeds of your new empire in your own salted earth. Sabine, we have discussed this. Yes, and I told you then how putting the empire before her citizens would lead only to revolt. Without an empire, there are no citizens. And in yours, there will be only beggars. Is that what Griga wills for her people? Do not take her name in vain, Sabine. I'll come back later. The citizens revolt. I wonder what the people really think of the Duke's plan. It wouldn't hurt to ask them, I suppose. Let's begin with those on the other side of the wall. Okay, and it's 1015 here in Calgary, and you're watching me play Final Fantasy uh, 16 as part of Raid the Arcade New Game Plus. Uh, you, uh, the, oh, sorry, just got a little, a little bit distracted by some of the initial dialogue there. Okay, so you're watching me play Final Fantasy 16 as part of Raid the Arcade New Game Plus. Do you want to play games and heal kids? Go to www.extra-life.org. 
As long as you remain, the veil will see to your needs. You needn't fret. The creatures are Okay, let's talk to the let's talk to the people, see what they think about all this. All right there. What is it you're after, sir? Just your opinion, actually. I wondered what you thought of the Duke of Oriflam. <laughs> oh, him. Not much. None of us traders do. It's thanks to nobles like him that we had to set up shop this side of the wall in the first place. Couldn't have the rabble getting any closer to the holy capital, could they? And now he's trying to drive us out completely. Threatening to take everything we got from us if we don't clear off. If the dame said she wanted him run out of town, I'll be straight through that checkpoint tar bucket in hand. Okay, I'm starting to think that maybe the people really don't like this guy. I heard the dame got an eye contact with the man who's an ice cast. A question, if you don't mind. What do you think of the Duke of Oriflam? Mm, don't get me started. You build a life for yourself somewhere, only for some noble to turn up and tell you you've got to hand it all over to him. If he thinks his name and his chains give him the right to empty our purses, he's in for a rude awakening. We'll do whatever it takes to keep what's ours. Whatever it takes. Okay, guess the people are around here. I really don't. I really don't like this guy. Hey, Targal, uh, what do you think of the Duke? Fetch. Okay, well, that's your opinion, and you're welcome to it. Okay, let's see. There's one more person to chat to about... about this guy. So... I've been hearing a lot of talk about a certain duke. Nothing good, I'll wager. Going around acting like he owns the place. And with hardly a word to the dame. This is her town, not his. I take it you'd rather she was in charge. As far as I'm concerned, she still is. Just need his eminence to sod off back to Oriflam. Well, the people seem united enough. What about the soldiers? Okay, so all the townsfolk are all united behind the idea that the Duke is a jerk. So, let's see if it's a notion that's shared by the soldiers. Wait, am I going for the right way? Ah, eh, close enough. You. You're the one who was talking to his eminence. On the dame's behalf, yes. I was trying to persuade him not to take the people's goodwill for granted, but it seems my words fell on deaf ears. What do you think of his plans? I'm a soldier, mate. He tells me what to do, not the other way round. Listen, I've got nothing but respect for the dame, but I've got a family to look after. That's where my loyalties lie, not with the town or the empire, but with my wife and children. If the Duke can get us the men and the equipment we need to fight off those blue-skinned bastards, I don't care how he does it. As long as you remain, the veil will see to your needs. Okay, that guy seems pretty <clears throat> if. Now, I don't know any Dungeons & Dragons terms, but I guess that guy is lawful neutral. Let's see what this guy has to say. I hear the Duke of Oriflam plans to turn this town into some sort of fortress. Do you think that's a good idea? It's not for me to say. All I know is that unless the Emperor orders me otherwise, his eminence's word is law. Look, no one likes all these taxes and tariffs, but empires don't come for free. Once Sambrak is back on her feet, we'll all reap the benefits. Parkour. 
Okay, one more to talk to. Okay, looks like that one is here on the other side of this building. Ah. Excuse me, do you have a moment? I wondered if you'd mind sharing your thoughts on the Duke of Oriflam. Well, <laughs> he's made a lot of enemies coming in the way he did. I mean, look around us. You can see the state the realm's in. The traders might not like having the screws put on them, but if they volunteered a few more of their hard-earned gill before things got bad, maybe they wouldn't have to. I think the Duke's got a point when he says rebuilding the Empire is the best way of making sure we're all protected. And if that means people who don't know one end of a saw from another have to make way for those who do, well, that's just how it goes. Hmm. Let's see what Philippe makes of all this. Captain, do you have a moment? For you, certainly. Clive, wasn't it? Thank you for last time. How can I help you? I wanted to ask you about the Duke of Oriflam. Do you intend to go along with his plan? But to tell you the truth, I'm in two minds. It's my sworn duty as a captain of the Imperial Army to obey his orders. But I can't say I agree with him. Philippe, I remember you saying that you became a soldier to protect the people you loved. The dame included. That's right, I did. Well, she doesn't agree with the Duke's orders either. She thinks they could tear Northreach apart. And she's probably right. Thank you, Clive. I know what I need to do now. Protecting the people I love is what matters. Doesn't matter how. Well, duty calls, so I better go. Thanks again. It seems Philippe wants to do the right thing at least. I expect Isabel will be pleased to hear that, if nothing else. Ah, fast travel to clear to the other end of town. <laughs> Save myself a couple minutes walk. Ah, Clive. How did you fare? Were you able to speak with the Duke? I was, but... One long story later. <sighs> so Northreach is to be a fortress after all. Well... It will certainly help to hold back the thralls. There's no denying that. Though I doubt it will come as much consolation to the townspeople whose worldly goods are confiscated to pay for it. They deserve to be heard, Clive. To have a say in this new empire the Duke means to build. Sadly, his eminence values their obedience more than their opinions. And hopes to reassert the authority of the state. I fear he sees the people as mere pawns on his chessboard to be sacrificed for the greater good. Needless to say, they themselves are of a different opinion, and would rather their destinies were in your hands. The soldiers, meanwhile, are content to follow their orders. And not just because of the Duke's rank, but because of his vision. I thought as much. Had I sworn to protect Sambrek, I dare say I too would want nothing more than to see it rise from the ashes. Thank you for trying. But the battle is lost. I don't know about that. What happened to your uniform? I handed it in, along with my resignation. Told the lads I wished them well, but that I owe it to those I love to call it a day. But why? Because I realize what really matters to me. Not following some nobleman's orders for the sake of it, but protecting what I care about. Protecting Northreach. I honestly don't know when those monsters will return. But I'm certain they're not finished with us yet. And when they do come back, we need to be ready for them. We need to stand together, all of us. 
With you to lead us, my lady, I reckon we can do it. It was you who finally convinced me, Clive. There's no point following orders if they go against everything you believe. Indeed. All of us, standing together. That has always been Northreach's best hope. And one which still lies within our grasp. We have only to turn our attentions to the true enemy. Thank you, Philippe, for showing me what I must do. Anything for you, my lady. Speaking of uh, standing together, would you mind if I borrowed a few of the lads from the Vale to help keep watch around the town? I fear his eminence has loftier tasks in mind for the guard. Not at all. Be my guest. Wouldn't be the first time. There may be hope for Northreach yet. Especially with men like you and Philippe to champion our cause. I, for my part, shall continue to work upon the Duke, in the stubborn belief that I might still tempt him into joining hands. But I suspect I shall have to call upon your aid again. Until then, Clive. Until then? A yeah, nice, easy little side trip. I got some experience. And lots of other stuff. Seal, Cirque, Bloody Hide, and Meteorite. So, everybody wins. Despite my repeated advances, His Eminence has proven a difficult conquest. Fortunately, I am nothing if not persistent. But, be that as it may, I might yet need you to press the point. The point of my sword, no doubt. <laughs> Okay, let's head back to the... Okay, yeah, let's uh, head back to, uh, to the hideaway and and pick up the next... Pick up the next uh, side trip. Covered in nicks and lumps, the lot of them. It's a wonder they can still walk. How are you doing? Here you go. Okay, let's see what's happening here in Rosaria. Ah, here's one. Rekindling the flame too. Oh, Martha needs something. Has something that needs doing. Guardians of the flame were true friends to the rest. They fought our enemies, manned our barricades, joined us in our patrols. Now they're gone, I suppose it's back to double shifts. Okay, so before I burst uh, here into the inn and find out what needs doing, it's coming up at 2.10.30 here in Calgary, so this is actually a good place for a station break. So, you're watching me play Final Fantasy 16 as part of Raid the Arcade New Game Plus. This is a stream for Extra Life, the 24-hour gaming marathon that's part of the Children's Miracle Network. Do you want to play games with the old kids? Go to www.extra-life.org. There you can sign up for free and start collecting pledges from your friends, family, and co-workers. That all go towards your local children's hospital, and then you get to play games for 24 hours. Game day this year is November 2nd, but fundraising goes all year round. Extra Life started over 15 years ago. This has raised over $130 million for children's hospitals across Canada and the U.S., and over $11 million was raised in 2023 alone, and it was all raised by gamers just like you. I'm playing games to help raise money and awareness for the Alberta Children's Hospital here in Calgary that helps over 100,000 sick and injured children each year. I've been part of Extra Life for 12 years now, and it's a great way to have a lot of fun by doing a lot of good. And you can donate links below or my pinned posts on Twitter, Facebook, and Mastodon. In 2023, over $183,000 was raised for the Alberta Children's Hospital through Extra Life. It was all done by gamers across Alberta and all over the world. You can also join in the fun and help out because kids can't wait. And now, by giving back, you can game on. If you're one of the first 1,000 X-Life Platinum participants to raise $2,000 US in 2024, you will unlock your very own custom X-Life controller for the console of your choice, courtesy of our friends over at Controller Chaos. These controllers will go fast, so get your fundraising going now. So if you'd like to learn more about X-Life, or if you'd like to sign up yourself, go to www.extra-life.org. 
Or, once again, if you'd like to help me in my fundraising to help the kids at the Alberta Children's Hospital, I just dropped my link in Twitch chat. Every dollar helps, every share helps. Okay, now let's get right back in the action in Final Fantasy 16, right here on Raid the Arcade New Game Plus. But first, this word from X-Drive Canada. Why I Extra Life? I Extra Life to make a difference. Through Extra Life, we're able to bring in thousands upon thousands of dollars for our hospital foundation. When we raise money for the kids, like our champion kid, Nico, we're able to make a difference in their lives by being able to have a facility where they're able to get the treatment they need in our own province. You sign up online, you pick the hospital you're gonna support, raise money for family, friends, neighbors, coworkers, etc., and then play games. You can go to extra-life.org for all the information you need to sign up and start doing Extra Life yourself. It's just fun to do it. It's, you can build such a community with friends, like some of my lifelong friends I've met through Extra Life United and stuff like that. Whether you're doing big production or a small little game night at your house, there's so many options and so many ways to do it that it's accessible to everyone. It's a great community. Everyone's in it for the same reason. They're all playing in support of kids' health or playing games for kids that may not be able to. It doesn't matter if you fundraise ten dollars, a hundred, or a thousand. Every dollar really does help. You don't have to be the most hardcore of gamers to get involved. If playing games is something you enjoy doing, and it's something that you're already doing, Extra Life is the way to take it, embrace that fun, and do something more than what you could do yourself. Be proactive, jump at it through Facebook, through extra-life.org, reach out to your local hospital, they'll know more, hop onto the Extra Life Discord, find local gamers. If your hospital doesn't have a guild, get out there, form one, and just keep going. And we're back with Final Fantasy 16 right here on Raid the Arcade New Game Plus. Okay, what's up, Mead? Clive's home. Ah, Clive, I was just about to send for you. I'd like you to take something to Sir Wade up in Eastpool. Seeds for planting. Thought it was about time they started growing their own food. I'll keep providing them with whatever they need in the meantime, of course. But if these pools going to survive, it's got to be able to fend for itself. As of those poor bearers. They've lived their whole lives in servitude, but now they're their own masters. Small wonder they ain't got the foggiest how to provide for themselves. So it's up to us to teach them. And if you're wondering why you, well, the wagoneers taking supplies up that way have been coming back with more and more reports of Akashic around the village of late. Sir Wade's putting a brave face on it. But I think even he's starting to worry. And if he's likely to share those concerns with anyone, it's you. All right. Thanks. Wouldn't ask if I didn't have to. There. That should be enough to keep him in Gazal Greens for a few years at least. Gazal Greens? Not the most mouth-watering crop, I'll admit. But they're hardy, they grow fast, and they fill a hole. Better that than something that'll wither away at first frost. And chocobos love them too, which is no small thing. When I say all of us need to pull together to get East Pool back on its feet, I mean all of us. They ain't exactly succulent, but cook them right, and they're just about bearable. I'll take your word for it. Anyway, Sir Wade'll know what to do with them. And if he don't, well... I'll go up there and show him myself. I'm sure you will. Get them Ghazal green seeds up to Sir Wade in Eastpool, would you? And while you're there, ask him what the situation is with the Akashic over that way. He might actually tell you the truth. Are the bearers taking well to their new home, do you know? I sometimes worry how they'll manage without me to cook and clean for them. Well, let's go find out.
Okay, let's see. Oh, yeah, I gotta go all the way over to useful. Oh, I can. Oh, I can fast travel. Nice. Parkour. I heard the Guardian saying we're supposed to grow our own food. The victuals Martha sends us are more than enough for me. Ah, Lord Rossfield. What brings you to Eastpool? A delivery from Martha. Okay, Gasol Greens. Well, while chocobos adore Gasol Greens, their human masters find them slightly less toothsome, turning to them only in times of hardship, more often after their faithful steeds have already been added to the pot. Ugh. These are Gasol Green Seeds. Martha's keen to cut the apron strings, then, is she? I jest, of course. You see... I had thought we might be able to revive the old wheat fields, but they'd long since gone to seed, only without the seeds. Martha was hoping he might be able to show the bearers how to plant and tend these, so that they'll be able to fend for themselves. That's not a bad idea. These bearers had only recently escaped their bonds before we brought them here. They know little of freedom, of providing for themselves and their loved ones. Unless we teach them how to live like free men, I fear that all we have achieved in bringing them here is to exchange one master for another. Not that myself and the Guardians have been the best example to them so far, subsisting almost entirely on Martha's charity as we do. It's about time we all started to provide for ourselves, bearers and Guardians alike. Unfortunately, We've been a little too busy of late to focus on much besides bolstering our defenses. There have been alarming reports of... The Horde is closing in. They're coming, so wait, all of them. Damn it all. I thought we'd have more time. Gather the men in the square. Send to the rest for reinforcements. Yes, Sir Wade. The Horde. A Kashek, a veritable legion of them. They've been seen prowling around the northern reaches for a while now. We don't have the numbers to hold back a swarm that size. I had hoped to build a perimeter wall so that myself and the Guardians might be able to defend the village, but... Now you're out of time. Precisely. If reinforcements from the rest arrive before they do, we may just scrape through, but I fear that's rather an enormous if. What if you could call on reinforcements from Eastpool? You mean the Bearers? We brought them here so they might live, not die, fighting for their lives. So wait. You said you lack men to defend the village. Are the bearers not men? Do they not wish to see Eastpool saved? Though they may not be trained soldiers like your guardians, what help they are able to offer could still prove the difference between victory and defeat. You're right, my lord. I will... Appeal to them. My friends, I humbly beg your aid. We Guardians are few and our enemies many. But I swear we can defeat them with you at our side. send us to the slaughter to serve as bait for those fiends so that you and your men might be spared and to think we trusted you say what you will a home is not worth dying for but it is worth fighting for Sir Wade fights to give you lot a chance. Just like I do. Just like Sid does. We all wanted to give you a home where you could be free. And you got one, didn't you? This place. 
East Pool. This is your village. Your home. And if you don't fight to protect what's yours, you'll lose it. You know I'm right. This world wants to take everything from you. Everything. Your homes, your freedom, your very lives. So then, are you going to stand by and let that happen to you? Are you going to accept fate like good little Bran did and die, having never stood up for yourselves? Or will you fight like free men and women? me a sword. I never dreamt I'd have a home of my own. And now that I have, I don't want to lose it. I will protect what's mine, or die trying. We all will. Free men and women, fighting together. For Eastpool! Thank you, Martha. Let me know who to call. We need a rousing speech. Don't mention it. Just promise me one thing: that you'll show them how freeborn fight. <laughs> Gladly. Well, if it was numbers you were lacking, you certainly won't be now. Thanks to you. Me? Oh, I just love the sound of my own voice. Lord Rossfield, my lady, we're ready. So what's the plan of action? We'll divide our forces into several small detachments, each made up of guardians, bearers, and guards from the rest. These will position themselves at strategic points around the village. Upon engaging with the Akashic, each detachment will keep the creatures occupied as best they can, steadily retreating all the while. You're going to lure them into the village? I am. We will have neither the time nor the resources to treat the wounded, so injuries must be avoided at all costs. Instead, we will focus purely on defense at first. By coordinating our withdrawal through the use of messengers drawn from among the bearers, we will aim to have the swarm converge at a point of our choosing. With luck, that point will be the village square. The perfect place for our most able warriors to surround them and fall upon them. And for you and I to finish them off. A sound plan. But one that'll require a leader with a cool head and strong nerves to coordinate the retreat. I'd say you have both in abundance await. But you'll be needed. Please, leave the last of the fighting to me. Ha! And let you have all the glory. Sir, wait! They're here! Then you know what you must do. We work together. Everyone playing their part. Each shielding the other that no man might fall. That Eastpool might live on. For Rosaria. For Rosaria! We've no time to argue, my lord. I'll do as you ask. And I will do as you ask. Suppose we'd better do our bit too, then, eh? Right you are, Martha. Okay, so it looks like a fight is coming. Uh, about at 10 minutes now, 10.45 here in Calgary, and you're watching me play Final Fantasy 16 as part of Raid the Arcade New Game Plus. This is a stream for Extra Life, the 24-hour gaming marathon that's part of the Children's Miracle Network. Do you want to play games in Eel Kids? Go to www.extra-life.org. You keep forgetting to go pause the cinematics. Fall. 
Oh, yeah, if it moves, smite it! Guys, this was all yours, Hargle. Yeah, and you call yourself a wolf. Oh, snap! Trophy earned. Bleep bloop. Yeah, bring down death from above! And that's how we do it at East Pool! Looks like that's the last of them. Lord Rossfield! Change of plan! What is it? Owl from the rest. An Akashic curl's been sighted on Rhiannon's ride and is headed in their direction. Well, the better half of her guard is here. So wait, how many Akashic remain in East Pool? Hard to say. My men are still facing some resistance, but I think the worst is behind us. I could order a detachment or two to fall back and... No. Let them finish the job. You stay here too, Sir Wade. Your men need you. I'll go after the curl. Join me only when East Pool is won. If you're sure, my lord. May the Founder protect you. Okay, let's see. Is there any bit of uh, fast travel that I can do in order to get there? Uh, nope, looks like... Yeah, it looks like I'm hoping it. One's mine. The curl was sighted on Rhiannon's ride back towards Martha's rest. Found a speed, you, my lord. Time is of the essence. Go, Chocobo. Okay, I'm ready to get out of here. That guy looks tough. There it is. With me, Togo. Let's try. Oh man, so much stuff is happening on the screen, I can't keep track of what's going on right now. Numbers, 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 so many numbers!
Yeah, didn't even break a sweat. Oh, got a curl whisker. All right. Back to East Pool. Lord Rossfield, the curl, is it? It's dead. Thank the Founder for that. And for you, my Lord. We were able to eradicate the rest of the Horde. I have Guardians posted around the village to keep watch for further attacks, but all seems quiet for now. I hesitate to say it, but... I think it might be over. I think it might. We did it. We saved Eastpool. Thank you, my friends. Thank you. No, Sir Wade. It's us who should be thanking you. You brought us together. Showed us what it means to fight for what you hold dear. We never had nothing to call our own before. We didn't know what it meant to protect it. But now we do. We really do. Forgive us, Sir Wade. You and your people saved us. And still we doubted you. But there's no doubt in my mind anymore. We're free men now. So we have to start acting like it. We have to fight to protect what's ours. To protect Eastpool. And we shall. We all shall. Together. This is our home. And if anyone or anything tries to take it away, they'll have us to answer to. Come on, then. Let's get to work. This village isn't going to rebuild itself. They're not slaves anymore. No. They're Rosarians. Your father took pity on the bearer's plight, and I believe if he were still with us today, this is what he would have wanted. I believe you might be right. I shall remain here, my lord, and do what I can to help rebuild the village. After all, this is my home now, too. And I could hardly call myself an East Poolian if I didn't pull my weight. I think you'll find it's East Pudlian, Sir Wade. But you should be proud, all the same. I'll have to pull my weight, too. Can't have the rest getting outclassed. Speaking of which, I ought to be getting back. Can we continue to count on your support, Martha? Of course. And I'd be counting on yours, too. Us Rosarians have got to stick together, haven't we? Indeed we have. And Clive, come by the Golden Stables when you get the chance. I ain't paid you for delivering them seeds yet. All right. I will. Lord Rossfield, do you remember our very first mission together? Clearing the goblins from the Stillwind Marshes? <laughs> How could I forget? <laughs> There's one sight that I shall never forget. You. Facing off against that giant mauble. Not a trace of fear on your face. Since that day, there have been more than a few times when I felt like giving up. When the odds seemed so stacked in the enemy's favor, I thought I may as well just lay down my sword and surrender. But every time, I would think back to the look in your eyes that day and remember what it means to be a shield. Know that whatever trials Eastpool may face, I shall never lose courage. Thanks to you. So, Wade, you have always been a true shield. I know that East Pool, and indeed all of Rosaria, will be safe in your hands. Thank you, 
my lord. I know the rest of the world will be safe in yours. <laughs> I'll do my best. Thank you again for all you have done for me and mine, my lord. You may rest assured that Eastpool will be safe in my hands. Thanks to you. Whoop! Uh, okay, let's do some more fast travel and head on back. The hero returns. It's lucky you came by when you did, eh? Not only did my seeds get delivered, but you went and saved Eastpool and all. I just did what I could. And it's only right that you get rewarded for it. Take it before I change my mind. Thank you, Martha. So, Eastpool's finally back on its feet again. And a home to free bearers. Who'd have thought we'd see the day, eh? Well, it was your idea. I know that, but... I never stopped to think what it would mean. Bearers in charge of themselves. Thinking for themselves. Working for themselves. Like your hideaway, but not even hidden away. Though I suppose the rest ain't much different nowadays. You know... Bearers living free like that. Reminds me of when I first met Sid. Loath as I am to recall that particular day. I take it you didn't always see eye to eye. What happened? Well, if you really want to know, I started doing what I do long before I met Sid. In fact, that's how I met him. Or at least how he came to meet me. He showed up at the stables one day, asking questions about who'd been buying up bearers. Founder knows what he thought I was doing with them. Running a hunt, poking around in their innards. Something awful, anyway. Me? I thought he was a new constable. Thought the game was up. But somehow we both managed to work out what each other was about. And before I knew it, the cheeky arse was rattling on at me about how I was doing it all wrong. After all my hard work, pfft, told me I was giving them relief, but not freedom. That my bearers were still dying as slaves. Got right under my skin, it did. Told him if he didn't like it, he could bugger off and report me to the garrison. And do you know what he did? He smiled. And then he laughed. And then I did the same. We made a pact that day. That whenever one of us was in need, the other would always be there for him. And you were. Well, we both wanted the same thing. To make life better for bearers. Just like your dad. Do you know, I was born right around the time Elwyn became Archduke. Growing up, I saw how he tried to change things. He certainly didn't lack for ambition, that one. Indeed. But the loftier one's ambitions, the harder they are to achieve. Which is why those of us who follow in their footsteps need to finish what people like Sid and my father started. Suppose you're right, I. And if we don't manage it, there's always them who come after us. Good thing we've got a few half-decent sorts waiting in the wings, eh? It's almost enough to give you a little bit of hope. Hmm. <laughs> Just a little. Anyway, enough nattering. Better get back to work. Let's see about making everyone some dinner, shall we? The least the folks who saved Eastpool deserve is a hot meal. And you and me ain't gonna save the world on an empty stomach neither. That sounds like a wonderful idea. Oh, ding! Level up two, level forty-one. Nice. Oh, so I've got a signboard now: a curiosity, the emblem of Martha's Rest, personal fiefdom of the Golden Stables, indomitable landlady. For those that know love for the Empire, the settlement stands as an island of safety in a sea of anything but. Don't worry, Clive. You went alone in this fight. Whenever you find yourself in need, be it of money, men, or a bowl of heart stew, the stable's door is always open.
Okay, so let's uh, take a look at that sign in my quarters right now here back at the hideaway, and then let's wrap things up. Uh, let's wrap things up for the evening. Uh, Nubis of in the chambers. Stew's awfully thin these days. Okay, let's check out my mail. Oh, it's Martha. What happened at East Pool with the Bears and the Guardians has been a long time coming, and I'm proud that it finally happened here in Rosaria. The Duchy of Old may be no more, but Archduke Elwyn's dream still burns in the hearts of many, and though and it's a victory such as these that the fire will spread. There's only beginning, Clyde, but a fine beginning it is. Oh, and there's also a quest here. Okay, one from Cole. Sir, I and the other curse breakers have grown concerned regarding the well-being of our captain. Despite the apparent unrest, her recent investigations have visited upon her. Lady Doris refuses all of assistance. If it's not too much trouble, I would ask you please speak with the captain and learn what troubles her so deeply. Uh, yep, I'll check that out. There's no way of knowing if Doris will confide in me. But I can speak to her at least. Yeah, there's a sign. It's there on the. It's there on the bottom. You're showing a sleeping chocobo. Hmm. I should really get some nails in order to to hang this to hang this stuff up. Really, it's really rather unbecoming and to, to leave all this stuff on the floor. <laughs> yeah, and I should talk. Uh, not too long ago, I got a couple of pin boards to put up all my badges from from Pax West, and and I still haven't hung it up yet. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, that that's just a little side note. Uh, yep, that's right. I'm going to PAX West to 2014, try the 2024 in Seattle. Yep, I'm leaving, I'm leaving a little about three weeks. So, yep, so that'll be fun. Okay, and it's 11.03 here in Calgary. So that is a good place to wrap things up for the evening. So, you've been watching me play Final Fantasy XVI as part of Raid the Arcade, New Game Plus. This was a stream for Extra Life, the 24-hour gaming marathon that's part of the Children's Miracle Network. Do you want to play games and heal kids? Go to www.extra-life.org. There you can sign up for free and start collecting pledges from your friends, family, and co-workers that all go towards your local children's hospital, and then you get to play games for 24 hours. Game day this year is November 2nd, but fundraising goes all year round. X5 started over 15 years ago and has since raised over $130 million for children's hospitals across Canada and the U.S. And over $11 million is raised in 2023 alone, all raised by gamers just like you. I'm playing games to help raise money and awareness for the Alberta Children's Hospital here in Calgary that helps over 100,000 sick and injured children each year. I've been part of x for 12 years now, and it's a great way to have a lot of fun by doing a lot of good. And you can donate in the links below or my pinned posts on Twitter, Facebook, and Mastodon. In 2023, over $183,000 was raised for the Alberta Children's Hospital through Extra Life. It was all done by gamers across Alberta and all over the world. You can also join in the fun and help out because kids can't wait. And now by giving back, you can game on. If you're one of the first 1,000 Extra Life Platinum participants to raise $2,000 US in 2024, you will unlock your very own custom Extra Life controller for the console of your choice, courtesy of our friends over at Controller Chaos. These controllers will go fast, so get your fundraising going now. So, if you'd like to learn more about Extra Life or like to sign up yourself, go to www.extra-life.org. Or, once again, if you'd like to help me in my fundraising to help the kids at the Alberta Children's Hospital, I just dropped my link in Twitch chat. Every dollar helps, every share helps. Well, thanks again for tonight's installment of Raid the Arcade New Game Plus. I'll be back Wednesday night at 10 p.m. Mountain Time. Thank you again so much for tuning in, and as always, kids can't wait. Good night, everybody. <laughs>